today on Roken Motor Company. But first, we have to pick things up from where we ended last week. Yeah, there's no fluid in those. I kind of forgot about that. Oh well, they're down now. And we'll have to get some fresh fluid in the system, purge these cylinders, and we should be good. I recently invested in this oil evacuator, fluid evacuator, whatever you want to call it. Decided to go with the John Dow Industries. It's my first time using it, but quite simply, we're gonna build a vacuum inside of the chamber using this Venturi. So we'll connect our air hose here, air will blow out of here, Venturi will create a low pressure zone here, which pulls vacuum. And then once this is drawn down, as indicated by the gauge. We can unplug our air supply, bring it over to our press, press, excuse me, two post lift, and we can evacuate the old hydraulic fluid, pour in some fresh fluid, and then get the whole system bled. Now that we've got the pressure down where we want it, nearly at max, I'll go ahead and shut off the valve going to the tank. Shut off the venturi. Disconnect the hose. Now hopefully there are no vacuum leaks, but what we'll do is we'll wheel it over, connect a hose of our choice. We'll probably just go with the thickest in this case. And we'll suck down the reservoir. This has a handy plug on it. And then we'll put on this large nozzle real quick and easy. Here's our reservoir. We'll get this open. Now we already lost a lot of this fluid, so I don't expect it to be totally full. Get that sitting in there. And now I've done everything correctly. Valve is open there. We still have a vacuum. Should be able to open this and start seeing fluid. And look at that. It really doesn't get easier than that now, does it? It has a six gallon capacity. This holds, I think about four or five gallons. I've got five gallons there to replace what's in it. Now, when we get to the bottom, you'll probably hear this start aerating. You can see the sight gauge here, really handy. So we don't accidentally overfill. We still have plenty of working vacuum. Just gone ahead and propped it up here. You can see once you kind of get air sucked in, it, it goes down and vacuum pretty quick. So that should be everything. Get this opened, get a funnel on it, and fill it. I'm going to need two hands, so stand by. All right, I apologize for the background noise. Unfortunately, I am still on generator power. We still do not have electricity complete. However, let's see what this thing does. We're going to have to bleed the cylinders but I want to get a little bit of weight on them so that I can more easily remove the caps. And this should, in theory, when I push this green button, go up. We'll have to pressurize the cylinders a little bit, so let's see what happens. And then, when we push this lever, they should go down and both rest on a lock. And it looks like that right side 
might not have gone on a lock, so I'll have to play around a little bit with the tension cables and see what's going on. Not seeing any oil. So I'm gonna go ahead and lower these and then pop those caps off. So here you can see the bleed port of the cylinder. Once we have a steady stream of oil, we know that this is bled properly. Now that's looking pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and say this cylinder's fine. Oh yeah, that's good. Now, that's just for demonstration purposes. I suggest if you see oil coming out at this rate, then it's probably bled. You'll know, you'll hear hissing if, it's, if there is air in the cylinder. Speaking about lubricant, we will have to go ahead and oil up these cables with some cable oil. Let's go ahead and get this tightened. That should be good. Just needs to be snug. Ah, some peace and quiet. So what's going on? It appears that whoever worked on this lift last didn't quite understand how to set up safety cables or you know really care at all about maintenance. Quite frankly, I'm a little shocked that this came out of a running shop. It's a bit dangerous. Now, Looking at this, the fix is pretty easy. All we've got to do is relax the tension on this cable. And when we do that, this will continue engaging the way it is. And this side, which is currently being held down, will be able to release and go up. Here's our new safety release cable. Also came with this little doohickey cable binder, whatever you want to call it. But we can go ahead and get this on the lift. First, we've got a little bit of machine work to do. The bolt on the side of the lift is bent, obviously. And I really don't think that's original. I'd be surprised if it was. Let's turn up a new bolt, possibly with some kind of grooved pulley on this side and get that installed. And on the other side, obviously, this handle isn't original, so we can make a new nice handle for it, as well as possibly a new bolt for this. I do think this is original. It's cross-drilled, but we'll have to pull it apart, double check it. If not, we'll make a better pin for it, one that is cross-drilled, and that way we can safely secure the safety release cable. Let's get a closer look at this bolt. It's approximately 
two and a quarter inches in overall length, has a shoulder length of an inch and a half, roughly a half inch of thread on the end, it's roughly five sixteenths. Check the thread pitch, five sixteenths standard bolt would be five sixteenths. And there we can see 18 threads per inch is an excellent fit. I went through my stockpile and I found this bar, which I'm 90% sure is 304 stainless. Just make sure we have at least two inches. And there's two and a half. Just a firm push. That won't go anywhere. Remember to disengage your back ears. And here we are a short time later with our finished part. I decided to just put a small knurl on the end there. Chamfered everything. That's much better than what was in there. Of course, we need to loop the cable over. Once there's tension on this, it won't go anywhere. Get alignment. Yeah, I'm real happy with that. I've gone ahead and looped the cable all the way through. The easiest way I found to do this is to actually get all the way on top of the lift and feed one half through one side and the looped end through the other side. I then routed it around these pulleys, put some fresh grease on them. And for now, I'm gonna go ahead and reuse this bolt. Works fine. Not super pretty, but I can't spend all of my time making nice looking 304 stainless shoulder bolts. And we can put just a little bit of tension. I'm really just two fingers pulling this and taking the slack out. And then I'll thread this nut on and I'm not gonna cinch it down super tight just yet. I don't wanna kink the cable if I don't have to. Up on top, we can see we're around that pulley as well as that pulley. And then of course we come out here around this pulley and over to here. You can see we have a little bit of slack in here. We'll probably tense this up just a little bit, but we don't want to pull it so hard that we're starting to take up tension in this. I went ahead and re-tapped the threads on this. They were pretty messed up, honestly. I think that somebody tried to put in a metric or 7 16 bolt. I think they'll do. Here we are some time later with our new handle and our old handle. Let's get this in place. And of course, the new handle installed in place. Now that we've got the lift back together and functional, we can set the lift down onto one of the stops. I like to set it at about chest height, just a bit easier to work on. And there's a couple more things we have to do. First, let's confirm that all of these arm latches are securely in place. You can see this one isn't quite adjusted properly. I can get it to slip teeth. Most of them look like this, where they're not engaging at all. So simply loosen the two adjustment screws, make sure this butts up into this gear here and do the same on the other side. And then that part is done. After a quick adjustment, we have all of the arm latches working correctly. And you know what that means? We can actually test this thing out. The more attentive viewers amongst you might have recognized me doing something, let's say, a bit 
dangerous in the last clip. Considering that this is an asymmetric lift, I really should have been facing the other way when I sat in that chair. I've gone ahead and positioned my Tacoma the correct way around, and let's get it up on the lift and see what this thing can really do. Despite all of the hard work that I've put into this lift, I really feel like I came out on top. My total investment, including the cost of the lift and all of the replacement parts, is just under $1,800. Aside from the bit of machine work that I had to do, the restoration process is no different than what I would have to do to build a new lift anyway. The as-bought condition was absolutely not safe to use, so buyers should beware if they go down the path of finding a used lift. With the truck roughly in the correct position, I bring the lifting pads closer to the frame. This makes it much easier to position them perfectly. With the arms in the correct position, we can ensure that they're locked into place. If the arm is misplaced, you simply lift this lever, reposition the arm, and lock it down again. Behold, after all of that hard work, we can finally lift up my truck. The clicking noise that you hear are the safety pawls engaging on the rack as the two post lift is raised. After lifting to the desired height, it's important to lower the lift back down so that it engages on the safety pawls. We check that the pads are located on the frame correctly. Confirm that the other safety paw is also engaged. And then it's finally safe to get underneath the lifted vehicle. It's been quite a while since I was underneath this real workhorse of a truck. Clearly, it needs some maintenance. The shocks need rebuilt. And one of the CV boots up front is torn. We definitely have to rebuild this. But before we get to the truck, we have bigger fish to fry. We finally have electrical approved. We're getting circuits ran all over the shop, machines wired, and so the next focus is definitely going to be some three-phase equipment and getting the CNC going. Be sure to tune in soon to Roken Motor Company to see everything that we have coming to the channel. Lots of machine rebuilds, lots of vehicle work, some restorations, new part manufacturing. We've got a long list of tasks to get through and we would love if you could join us as we get through them. Remember to subscribe, like, and share with all of your friends. And thanks for tuning in to Roken Motor Company.